In this video, we're going to be talking about applied optimization problems. And in this particular problem, we've been told that an open top box, so a box that has no top to it, the top is open, with volume 20 cubic feet is twice as long as it is wide. And then we've been asked to find the width of the box that minimizes the amount of material required to make it. So as with any applied optimization problem, the first thing we want to do is look for the question. What if we've been asked to maximize or minimize? So if we look at the question, here, find the width that minimizes the amount of material. So if we can go ahead and underline that, what we're looking to do is minimize the amount of material. That's what we're trying to do. So what do we mean by amount of material? Well, the amount of material required to make the box. So in other words, the amount of material that we need to make the bottom, to make the sides, to make the front and the back. It's an open top box, so it has no top, but the amount of material to make the rest of the sides or the rest of the faces of the box. Well, isn't that just the same thing as surface area? The amount of material required to make it, that's gonna be the surface area of the box. So because we know then that we've been asked to minimize the amount of surface area, whatever you're asked to maximize or minimize, you're gonna need a function for that value. So we're gonna need a function for surface area of the box. So what do we know about the surface area of an open top box? Well, the surface area of an open top box would be length times width plus two times width times height plus two times length times height. Remember that when we have the surface area of a regular box, the bottom and the top have the same surface area. To find the surface area of the bottom, you just multiply the length of the box times the width, and then if you multiply that by two, that accounts for the top and the bottom. If we take width times height and then multiply it by two, that accounts for the front and the back, and then if we take length times height and multiply that by two, that accounts for the left and the right sides. So the only thing we're not including here is the top of the box because we're not multiplying the surface area of the base by two. So we only have the base, not the base and the top. So this is going to be our function for surface area. Once we identify what function we need, we need one for surface area, your next step is always going to be get this function in terms of one variable only. Well, right now it's in terms of three variables. So how are we going to get it in terms of one variable? Well, if we go back to the problem, we've been told that the box is twice as long as it is wide. In other words, the length is two times the width. So what we can say then is that the width or two times the width is going to be equal to the length. If the length is is twice the width, then we would have to multiply width by 2 in order for that to be equal to the length. So 2w is going to be equal to l. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and make this substitution everywhere to get rid of the variable l. So if we say that l is equal to 2w, then we can call this volume formula here. Instead of l, we'll say 2w. So 2w times w times h, or volume is equal to 2w squared h. For surface area, we'll do the same thing. We'll replace L with 2W. We'll get surface area is equal to 2W w plus 2WH plus 2 times 2W times H. And when we simplify, we'll get 2W squared plus 2WH plus 4WH, or surface area equals 2W squared plus 6 wh. So now we have both of these formulas in terms of only width and height. We need to get the surface area equation in terms of only one variable. Going back to the problem again, remember we were told that the volume of the box is 20 cubic feet. So what we can do is plug 20 in for the volume and say 20 is equal to 2w squared h. Now if we divide both sides by 2, we get 10 equals w squared h. If we divide both sides by w squared in order to solve for h, we're going to get h is equal to 10 over w squared. Now we have a value for h, we have this value for h, 10 over w squared, that we can go ahead and plug in right here for h to get our surface area function in terms of w only. So when we do that, we're going to get s is equal to 2w squared plus 6w, and then instead of multiplying by h, we'll multiply by 10 over w squared. And when we simplify, we'll get s is equal to 2w squared 
plus 6 times 10 gives me 60. I'll get this W in the numerator to cancel with one W in the denominator, leaving me with just the other W in the denominator. I could also call this surface area is equal to 2W squared plus 60 times W to the negative 1. So now we've accomplished the first two goals that we always have with any applied optimization problem. We identified what we needed to minimize or maximize. We realized that we needed to minimize surface area. We developed a function for surface area, and then we got that function for surface area in terms of one variable only. Once you get to this point, once you have the function you need, and it's in terms of one variable only, and you've simplified it as much as you can, your next step is always going to be to take the derivative of that function. So we've been calling this function for surface area s, so our derivative is going to be s prime. So we'll say s prime is going to be equal to taking the derivative of the right hand side with respect to w, 2w squared is going to become 4w, 60w to the negative 1 is going to become negative 60w to the negative 2, or we could call this s prime equals 4w minus 60 over w squared. Now we've got an equation for the derivative. Our next step is going to be to try to find critical points of this function, which we're going to do by setting the derivative equal to 0. So we want to go ahead and say 0 is equal to 4w minus 60 over w squared. We want to solve for w. So we'll add 60 over w squared to both sides. So 60 over w squared equals 4w. Multiplying both sides by w squared, we get 60 equals 4w cubed. Dividing both sides by 4, we get 15 equals w cubed. And then if we take the third root of both sides, we get w is equal to the third root of 15, which if we do the math is approximately equal to 2.4 Six, six. So now what we have is a potential critical point of the function. A critical point is a point where the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So because we only found one critical point, this is probably the point that minimizes the amount of material required to make the box. But we have to verify that using the first derivative test. Now in order to use the first derivative test, as you might guess, we're going to be using the first derivative. What we want to do is plot just a really simple number line over here. And what we'll do always is take the value we found, the potential critical point, just put that right in the middle. So 2.466, we'll call this w equals 2.466 right in the middle. We want to then pick values that are close to this point, but on either side of it. So one value that's less than and one value that's greater than this value we found for w. So we'll go ahead and say w equals 2 and w equals 3. Now remember, it's the first derivative test, so we're going to be testing the values 2 and 3 in the first derivative s prime. So I always like to go ahead and say s prime right next to my number line here to remind me that I'm going to be testing these things in the first derivative as opposed to the original function or some other equation. So then what we want to do is take the values on either side of the critical point, in this case w equals 2 and w equals 3, and test them in our first derivative. So we're going to say s prime of 2, we'll do that one first, s prime of 2 is going to be equal to 4 times 2, so we're taking this function right here, 4w minus 60 over w squared, and we're plugging 2 in for w. So 4 times 2 minus 60 over 2 squared. Now the exact value here of this right hand side isn't important. What's important is whether or not the value is positive or negative. In this case it's easy to find the exact value. 2 squared is 4, 16 divided by 4 is 15. 4 times 2 is 8, so 8 minus 15 is a negative 7, or just we can say a negative value. That's all that's important, whether it's positive or negative. Then what we want to say is we want to test the other value on the other side, 3. So we'll say s prime of 3 is equal to 4 times 3 minus 60 over 3 squared. And again, if we do the arithmetic here, what we'll find is that this time we get a positive value. So again, not the exact value, but whether or not the values here are positive or negative. So then what we can say, we can go ahead and plot the results here on our number line. So for s prime of 2, we get a negative value, which means that everything to the left of 2.466, w equals 2.466, is going to be negative. So we can go ahead and say this here 
because S prime of 3 was positive, we can go ahead and indicate increasing here, and then we'll say decreasing, increasing, we'll say negative and positive. So remember we found that S prime of 2 was negative, so we go ahead and call this negative. S prime of 3 was positive, so we go ahead and call this positive. So when the derivative is negative, that means the original function is decreasing. So we draw this decreasing arrow. When the derivative is positive, it means the original function is increasing. So we go ahead and draw this increasing arrow. And now that we've sketched this out, what we see is that the point w equals 2.466 is a minimum, a local minimum of the function because the function is decreasing and then after this point increasing, which means that this point has to be a minimum. So with the first derivative test, we've now proved that w equals 2.466 is a point that minimizes s because we tested s prime, w equals 2.466 is a point that minimizes s, which is the surface area or the amount of material required. So now before we give our final answer, we always go back to the question because we're not necessarily asked all always just for this value of w. We may be asked for a different value in our question. So in this case, the question literally is find the width. Find the width. So we need to give for our final answer a value for the width. And in this case, that's just w equals 2.466 or the third root of 15 would actually be more precise. But that's going to be the value of w that minimizes the amount of material required to make the box.